morning, one of my prayers this morning is that God will speed me up. And beyond speeding me up, that God will cause you to hear, you know, aside my voice, will cause you to hear a voice that teaches you this word clearly. Because if there's anything called infirmity of time, I have it this morning. There's so much that the Lord to share. So much. But I'll go as far as God will help us. We're going to talk today about the power of the mind. Power of the mind. You remember I said last week when I read Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Put it on the screen for me. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Put it on the screen. I said there are three keys that God gave to Joshua in this scripture. Three keys. Please follow me closely. Follow me very, very closely. No distractions whatsoever. If you get what I'm going to teach you this morning, it will change your life absolutely. Three keys God gave to Joshua. I said the three keys are talking, thinking, and walking. I mean, remember when I said that last week? Talking, thinking, and walking. In Joshua 1 verse 8, he said very clearly that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and I shall keep it on the screen. And I shall have good success. I also said last week that you must understand that the purpose of wealth is for the kingdom of God. If you don't understand this, then you are not a candidate for it. The reason why God wants to bless you is because of his kingdom. There are two kingdoms on the earth. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. God has his children. Satan has his children. Satan has an agenda. God has an agenda. We already know who will win. God will win. Obviously. No matter how much Satan tries. But God has his soldiers here on the earth. The Bible says that we are soldiers of Christ. So he that's a soldier with that wars does not entangle himself with the affairs of this life. We are warriors of God. And every time we push, we push either God's mandate or Satan's mandate. Anything that you're doing, you're either pushing God's mandate or Satan's mandate. Your business is either pushing God's mandate or Satan's mandate. Your, your, your work, your services, your finance is either pushing God's agenda or Satan's agenda. There's no middle point where you can just say, okay, I'm not either here or there. I'm just in between. There's no such thing like that. You are either here or you're there. So God says to Joshua, Joshua 1 verse 8, he says, you will make your way prosperous. A lot of Nigerian believers would not like this scripture. As much as we quote it, because number one, it does not mention village people. It doesn't say anything about witches and wizards. It doesn't say anything about the government. It doesn't put any responsibility outside him that hears it. It puts solely all responsibility on the hearer. He said, you will make your way prosperous. It doesn't even say God will make you prosperous. Nigerian believers, a lot of African believers would love to push. We love to hear that we are not the reason for our problems. That's a generational cause. And that my father battled it, my mother battled it. And I'm not saying that those things are not there. I'm saying that we have overpowered them. We have given them too much power than they have. Don't only people have village people. Why do village people not stop us from discovering the phone or inventing the phone or inventing internet? Why? He puts here, he says, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Did you see that? He says that you are solely responsible. You are solely responsible for the outcome of your life. If your life is bad, you are the one. If it's good, you are the one. If you go up, you are the one. If you come down, you are the one. He puts solely the entire responsibility on you and a lot of people don't like that. Because then it makes you responsible. If you look at your life, you are the, you are the cause of this. This is why you're like, no, 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 it's not me, it's my mother. He said, you are the one. We don't like that. He puts a lot of responsibility. And says, first it starts with your mouth. Then it goes into your mind. It starts with your mouth, then it goes into your mind. Romans chapter 10 says that the word of faith that we preach, it's in your mouth, in your mind. So it starts with your mouth. Then it goes into your mind. Your mind feeds your mouth. Your mouth feeds your mind. Your mind feeds your mouth. Your mouth feeds your mind. I said if your mouth feeds your mind with God's word in abundance where you don't need it, your mind will feed your mouth back with God's word spontaneously when you need it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Not out of the scarcity of the mouth, of the heart. It means that you must feed it abundantly. 
it is out of the abundance of the heart, not the scarcity of the heart. That means it must be full. Your heart must be full for it to come out in the times of need. Out of the abundance. I said the word meditate last week. Meditate means aga, to utter a sound, to mutter. The act of thoughtful deliberation with the implication of speaking to oneself. Utter, speaking, talking to yourself as if you are a mad person. So that's meditation. So God says to Joshua, he says meditate day and night. Is it possible to meditate day and night? Is it possible to meditate day and night? Is it possible to worry day and night? Can you worry all day long? Is it possible to be in the office and you're worrying about your house rent? Is it possible to be in the office and be worrying about mommy's health? Is it possible to be asleep and you are worried about your children's school fees? Is it possible? So what it takes to worry is what it takes to meditate. Worry is meditating on the lies of Satan. Constant speaking to yourself. Ah, how will we do this thing now? Have you seen people talking like that in the office? Just talking to themselves. That's meditation. It says meditate day and night. It's possible to meditate all night. Psalm 119 verse 148. Quickly. I will need you guys to help me very because I don't have time. Psalm 119 verse 148. I will need from KJV and NLT. Psalm 119 verse 148. It's possible to meditate. It says my eyes prevent the night watches. Help me. Tolu with NLT. That I might meditate in thy word. What does NLT say? Psalm 140, Psalm 119. What's Tulu? Yeah, fast. 48, 148. I stay awake through the night. I stay awake through the night thinking about your promise. All night thinking about your promise. I stay awake all through the night thinking about the promise. So it's possible to stay awake all night pondering on what God says. Look at Psalm 1 verse 1. Psalm 1 verse 1 is one of the most fantastic scriptures of the Bible. It says, the blessed is the man. Give it to me one. Is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scornful. Does not walk, does not stand, does not sit. Does not walk, does not stand, does not sit. It starts first with walking, walking, then you stand. And then you feel comfortable enough to sit in the way. Do you understand what I'm saying? It starts for one. Give me the verse, verse two quickly. Verse two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. Verse three. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season, and his leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever. So we see number one, his conversations is not with the ungodly. His conversations are not with the ungodly. He does not walk with them. He does not stand in their path. It's always starting with walking. You are walking with them, then you begin to stand where they are standing. Therefore, you know you are sitting with them. That means you have gotten comfortable. It starts with walking. When Lot came to Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says he put his house outside Sodom. He did not enter Sodom. He pitched his tent outside Sodom. By the time the angel came to visit Sodom, Lot's house was in the center of Sodom. How did he move from the gates? Because he started walking. No, 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 no. I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to convert them. Evil communications starts with walking, then standing, then sitting. The Bible says here that whatever he does shall prosper. So he starts conversation. Then he meditates on God's word day and night. Again, he talks about talking, thinking, and doing. Our focus is on the mind. The mind is extremely powerful. Man is said to be a tripartite being. That means he is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in the body. Man is a spirit. He has a soul, and he lives in the body. The soul is the seat of his will, his intellect, and his emotions. His will. It's, with his soul, he makes decisions. With his soul, he is either intelligent. He develops his intellect. With his soul, he feels. His soul, he has a soul. He is a spirit, he has a soul, but lives in the body. He has, a, he has a soul and lives in the body. So that soul is what we call the mind. It's with that mind that he thinks. It's with that mind that he makes decisions. The mind is extremely powerful and is absolutely limitless. The mind has no limit. Just like God, the mind has no limit. The mind cannot be caged. You cannot cage the mind. 
What does it take the mind to travel to U.S. right now? Do you know the right where you are now? You can be in U.S. Now. Flash. Faster than the speed of light. You are in the U.S. now. Sitting with Biden. Having breakfast. Right now. No visa. That's how powerful the mind is. The man can live here now. That's why you he can be here now. You're eating your people right Amala joint. You are in church, and you're already eating Amala. A service can be powerful like this, and you are seated here, and you can miss out on all the possibility of the service because I think your mama, your mind can live, and a person can be can miss out on what God has for them because their mind left, even though their body is here. The mind is powerful. It lives limitlessly. No limit in space, no limit in time. The mind has no limit in time. It can live in the past. You can go to the past now. You can go to your primary school. Now. You can go to your secondary school now. You can even wear your secondary school uniform. I'm telling you. That's how powerful it is. You can live in the present. You can live in, you can live in the future right now. Right now, you can be in the future. Right now. Very strong. No limits, no boundaries. It's extremely powerful. It can live everywhere. And that's why God says that the mind is key in everything he wants to do in our lives. The brain is the physical and the visible part of man that performs the work of the invisible mind, the brain. This brain is the most powerful thing in the body of man. Is visible, is the visible part. The mind cannot be seen, but the brain is the visible part of your body that performs the functions of your mind. The brain is said to have 10 billion nerves. Scientists are still researching on the brain. The brain is extremely powerful. The good thing about the brain is that even though the colors of our skin may be different, the color of our brain is not. There's no difference in the brain of a Chinese man, of an Asian, as intelligent as they are. There's no physical difference in the configuration of the brain of an Asian. And Asians are extremely intelligent. Yet if you put on the brain of a man from Abe Okuta, local man who never went to school, put his brain beside the brain of an Asian professor, exactly the same amount of cells. No difference. No difference in the blood. No difference in the brain. The brain is so powerful. The nervous system of the man is the electrical system of the human body. The entire system. The brain. The way it passes, it, it organizes the whole body. The way God created human beings. Extremely complex. Open to Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 14. Give me KJB and NLT. Keep the Bible with NLT. I read the NLT a lot today. Tolu. Psalm 139, verse 14. Quickly. Psalm 139, verse 14. What does it say? I would praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul know it right well. Give me an LT quickly. Thank you for making me what? He made me complex. He made me complex. Not complex. Human beings are complex. He made me complex. The way he fabricated you, you are extremely complex. There's nobody in the entire 7.7 .7 billion people living on the universe that is like you. No, nobody. From your thumbprints to your fingernails to your DNA is extremely complex. There are billions and billions and billions of nerves that makes your DNA. God made it. So when he was talking about beautiful and wonderfully made, he wasn't talking about your figure. Now, you think he's talking about your figure. But yet, there are people that are born without limbs. There are people that are born blind, and yet they are beautifully. Are you following me? Take your minds off your breast. It's not about your breast. God did not intend that your breast will be all that you have to offer. Are you following me? I'm serious. He did not intend that the most critical asset of your life will be your breast. That was not his plan. You may have a very big breast, I understand. And you are thinking, follow me, and I'm very serious. You are thinking that this breast is an advantage. 
that you can conquer the world with it. So you walk into an interview, in your mind, your breast is your confidence. That when they see this breast, you look at other girls, you say, they don't have breasts. Are you following my point? God did not plan that your confidence will rest on your breasts. That was on his plan. That you go for contact. Of course, we know there's a lot of sexual assault in, 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 in companies these days. And that's a lot of problem on its own side. That people cannot be promoted until they sleep, sleep with the boss. That's extremely terrible. But while we are dealing with that terrible issue, you are there leveraging on something that should be ignored. So you go out and expose your breast. Because in your mind, nobody can. Nobody can. Eh? Nobody can what? Resist it. You have breastfed all the men. And you are not mother nature. That's not God's plan. That was not God's plan. There are men too voting there because they are big bowler. Everybody, everybody must respect them. Yeah, they are men like that. They are men like that. I've seen men voting there because they have big genitals. The world is under their feet. That was not God's plan. See, if they, if they see, if you see what I'm packing, it's well endowed. Empty brain, big penis. <laughs> Terrible. Listen to me. Listen to me. We have a generation that needs to be taught. Why do you have all those sex enhancement, all those sex penis enlargement, hip reduction, all those dragons they're selling all over the old place? Because you have a generation that that is that that is beclouded and distracted. If they see me, they know. Say, have you seen what he has? And so you think every woman will fall for that? It's only a low life, low profile, no ambition, no career. A woman who has no plans and is, that will sacrifice leadership of her home, of her children, will sacrifice a man leading her home to destiny because of big pennies. Only a woman like that. You missed it. He didn't intend that. He didn't intend that. Take your mind off that. There's something more beautiful about you. It's not visible. The Bible says, why we look at things that are not seen, but things that can be seen are temporal. Things that cannot be seen are eternal. It's God's plan that your mind will be your greatest asset. Look at Cobams. Cobams is blind. Cobams is blind. He's not even praying to cease. He's not going to synagogue church. He's not going to Christ Christ embassy. He's blind. But tell me, who's more blind, Cobams or his driver? Who's more blind? Look at Ray Charles. These are men that moved what Theodore Roosevelt was the president of America. He governed America sitting on a wheelchair. He was lame. That's America. This is Nigeria. You know, there's something that happens to the brain that makes you find excuses. Some people, their brain is an auto, auto set. Find the excuse, no matter what you say. Something will snap quickly and exclude you and say, hey, my own case cannot be like that. Because you have, you have taken too much time training your mind to find excuses. So it's very natural. You find the excuse every time. Something, no, it can't work because I'm from here. No, it can't work because I'm here. I'm Eugene, sir. I'm Ewo Wode. I'm here. So it, automatically your brain has been set, auto-set, to always find the excuse to excuse you from success. It doesn't even, it's, a, it's a skill you have developed with time. Whether it happens here or there. God says you are fearfully made. So just by improving the quality of your mind alone and your thoughts, you can improve the quality of your life. Romans 12, verse 2. Just by improving the quality of your thoughts, of your life alone, your, your entire life can change. By improving the quality of the thoughts in your head. It says, I'm being not conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind. Someone say renewing of your mind. It is a removing of your mind. It's a renewing. Because Muslims go to mosque and they remove their shoes. Christians go to church and they remove their brains. That's not the plan. By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable. Give me an NLT, Tolu. What does it say? 
Don't copy the behavior and costumes. Don't copy of this world. the behavior and what? And costumes. Custom and the customs of this world. Of this world. Why? But let God transform you. He said, let God transform you. Into a new person. Into a new person. By changing the way you think. Literally changing the way you think. Sit down. He says he can turn you into a new person. Let God transform you by changing the way you think. Let him transform your life. Let him change your financial life. Let him change your business. Let him change everything about you just by changing how you think. You see, this is a foundation. I can't finish this. You don't need to even <laughs> stretch by I'm telling you. Ah. Just by changing your thoughts alone, you can change your life. Let's look at the man that's life, whose life was changed. Luke chapter 15. I'll show you something this morning. Luke 15 from verse 11. Let me read from my Bible. Luke 15 verse 11. It was the story of the prodigal son. Verse 11. The verse and this is said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them his life. So you see, there's something wrong with this guy's mind. The father is not even dead. He says, give me my own, give me my own. He said, I don't know. You may not die in time. But we are going like this. You might just end up like Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> you are getting younger. He said, please, please, let me know. Let me know. Let's know now. Let's know now. What's my own? What's my own? What's my own? Let, give it to me now. So there's something wrong with his mind. He never worked for this. He never, he never, there's not, he had no contribution to this. And something told him that he's entitled to it. You see, this mindset of entitlement to think that doesn't belong to you. There are people that ask you for money and are hungry that you don't give to them. And it's not their own. You can't, you can't guilt trip me. I have money and I will not give you. It's my money. I work for it. Go work for yours. It's a, it's a stupid entitlement mentality. That's why people stand up and say, why did they go? Start go and start your church and employ him. You are hungry? Start a church and employ that guy. This one is, that's how to solve problems. Is that not? Is that not solve a problem? There's no need to tell you, no! You, okay, since you did that, I'll start a church here in Jesha. Come and pastor it. Start your own. Don't, don't have a sense of entitlement to something that does not belong to you. It's not your own. Anybody can do you see, the right of ownership under our law is the right to dispose as will. I can burn my property. My property. The government cannot stop me. The mo- don't make it a danger to other people's property. That's all. I can bring out all my clothes now and set it on fire there. It's my clothes. No, there's no law against it. People might be walking naked and say, no, I'm not giving them this clothes. I'm going to burn it. I can do that. It's my clothes. But this guy has a problem. He says his father's property and take it. The Bible says in verse 13, and not so many days after that, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Verse 14, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and they began to be in one. Verse 15, then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Verse 16, and he would gladly have filled his mouth with the pots, that means with the food that the swine ate, but no one gave it to him. Let me stop here and explain a bit. You cannot sustain a wealth that your mind has not been trained to produce in the first place. No matter the amount of money I give to you, if your mind has not grown to be able to have produced that wealth, you can't sustain it. Only what starts a thing can sustain it. That's how only God can sustain this earth. He's the source of the earth. Are you following my point? So if I don't have a mind that is strong enough or trained enough or developed enough to be able to manage a kind or a level of wealth, let me win you win ten times. I will lose. Let them give me ten billion. I will squander it. Are you following my point? Now look at this. This guy was in a famine. The Bible says that there was a famine, but yet in the midst of that famine, a farmer had food for his own pigs. Pigs have food in a famine. Human being does not have. So you see this economic crunch. You have to understand. You have to understand that there are people whose dogs are eating better than human beings in this country. In this economy. And they didn't steal the money. In a famine. Bible calls the famine. <laughs> the prodigal song. 
squandered everything. People would waste what they don't work for. Give them lottery. How many people in the world? Look at the research. Go Google it. Everyone that win millions, who wants to be a millionaire? Look at all the dash, dash money they have dashed people. Bonanza. Who are they today in the scheme of things? Are they among the 10, 100, 20, 1,000, 100,000 richest people in the world? No. They're not. Because if you get money that your mind can't keep, you can't sustain it. Your mind has not grown more. You can't sustain it. You can't sustain it. He wasted it. Look at this scripture. Quickly. Put your hands there. We're coming back. Look at Proverbs 21. Give me Proverbs 21, verse 20. Proverbs 21, verse 20. What does it say? Proverbs, keep your NLT close. I need NLT. I need GNT, good news. If you have good news, if you have God's word translation, if you have NIV. What does it say? Proverbs 21, 20. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spends it all. You know, you know how many you know that scripture? You've had me preach it many times. The foolish man. The foolish man. So that's the scripture. Proverbs 21, verse 20. Give me NLT. What does it say? The wise have wealth. The wise have wealth. And luxury. And luxury. But fools spend whatever they get. Now, he did not use this, the, 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 the words and opposites of the rich and the poor. He uses wise and foolish. So, what makes one rich was the state of his mind. Are you following me this morning? What made the one better than the other was not because he was born like that. He calls him the wise. He said he has wealth, but the foolish spends everything. He earns one billion, he will spend it. He earns 10 million, he will spend it. He will borrow when he was earning 100,000. He will still borrow when he increases to 500,000. He has mastered the art of spending everything he has. Spends it all. Waste. You know what you waste? So ask you now. Transfer money. That's uh, GT Bank. I will transfer money like that. When, at the end of the month, when I want to count my money, ah, where it happened to my money? So I started using this. I have this app that they have that allows me to transfer and put in narrative. That I'm transferring this money so I'm able to trace my expenses. To know where there's waste. God hates waste. If you work with me in this church and you want to collect money, you know how you struggle for money. Yes. You will sign like this, your hand will bend. For one five. No, no I'm serious. If you have ever, if you have ever had to call for me, ask for me. If this thing is, is more expensive by one five, I will call. If we bought it two five last month and it's now three five, I will call. I will call. Femi? Yes, yes. You can you know. How is this thing 35 now? He knows. They say, but ah, ordinary 1,000. You see all this ordinary 1,000. That's where your money is going, no? Jesus said, gather the fragments. He didn't say, gather the bread. Eru bready. They gathered and out of the fragments, they gathered 12 baskets. Out of fragments. One five. One two. So how much? Everything. You are now wondering, where's all my money? Waste. What does good news say? Good news. What has good news? Wise people live in wealth. Wise people live perpetually in wealth. And luxury. And luxury. But stupid people stupid spend people. their money as fast as they get. As it's coming like this. Bah, it has gone. Ask your neighbor, are you stupid? 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 As it's coming like it's gone. Before they, get, they are doing business, a client has only called them. But the client has not paid. Though. The client has not paid. They have priced the shoe. I'm telling you. Stop spending money that you don't even have. The client just called. Hey, I saw your post on Instagram. How much is this thing? He says, well, 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 let me call you back. Next stage, just go, hey, hey, that necklace. How far now? Is this still available? I said, just spend it as fast as you get. 
What's, uh, give me, what does God's word say? That God's word you gave to me now? NIV. No, I gave you good news. Okay, give me NIV. The wise store up choice food. Now, look at that. So this one explains why the wise is living in luxury. Why is he living in luxury? He stores up. He stores up. You see, poor people have a mindset. When they come around the rich, and they see them with a lot of money, they say, ah, what are you doing with all this money? Let's spend it. Have you seen people like that? They say, ah, see money, ah, let's spend it now. Again, no. They think that money is for spending. What is the purpose of money if not for spending? The Bible says the wise, what makes him wise is toss up. He said, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her wise. She's toss up food. Hunt. That was the, the Bible says, go to hunt. I know you are human being, but please, go to hunt. The Bible says, the wise will hear and increase learning. Go to hunt. It's toss up food. What happens to the foolish? But fools go, gulp their ass down. They gulp it down. People have eaten a whole building. <laughs> gulp it down. If you, by mistake, see money that is more than the quality of your mind, the money will reduce to the quality of your mind. Always. Always. Hmm. So the prodigal son wasted everything. Squandered it. And it was in famine. And we see this a lot among children of the rich who don't learn. They never learn. Their father is wealthy. But they never learn. You see, and that's the problem of the rich. And when you get rich, when you get rich, don't shield your children from the disciplines and the lessons that made you strong. All in the be that you don't want them to suffer what you suffered. Are you following my point? Don't shield your children. There are people whose children that can't wash plates. Can't clean the house. Because now they have the house full of maids and has the house full of house helps. And so the children grew up totally responsible. Where are the children of the mighty? Where are the children of MQ Abiola? Where are the children of Darucha? How many of you know Darucha? In when we're young, when they see somebody's Darucha, he's like, they said he was so rich, he sends his dirty clothes to US for laundry. Flights that go. They wash it and bring it back. The children of the mighty become weak. Because the mighty expose their staff to the principles of wealth and children their children. That is why the staff become wiser than the children. The servants become wiser than the sons. Did you see that scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 that says, I've seen an evil upon the earth. I saw servants riding upon horses and princes are trekking on the ground. Why? The father shielded their children from the principles. This boy has no sense. The Bible said when he was going to come to his mind, verse 17, Verse 17, quickly. When it was going to come to his mind, Luke 15, 17. The Bible says, who has it? Give me, you know, I need KJV first because KJV gives us a foundation that we can use. And when he came, someone said came to himself. There's no Holy Spirit involved in this thing. No prayer points. The Bible says, him by himself came to himself. When he came to himself, no prayer, no pastor, no prophetic word. He came to himself. Who did he remember? He remembered his father's staff. You are not getting this thing, I'm telling you. When you walk in an office, the boss is there giving you up. Do this, Excel. Do that one, PowerPoint. Do this one, presentation. You are the one, you are the one. You think they want to kill you? They are training you. Their children are chopping life. And they come with, Dad, I just saw a land cruise and love to have it. Dad, they go and buy it. They are enjoying the money. You are enjoying the foundation of the wealth. The boy said when he remembered his father's servants, that they have bread. If not. Why? Their mind was improved. 
They may be called servants, but they have a mind. They may be called servants, but they are intelligent. They may be called servants, but their minds are built up. Their minds are built up. Even though, hey, yeah, time has gone. <laughs> I'm looking at this thing. <laughs> Romans 12 verse 2 says, you can transform your life by the renewal of your mind. If there's anything you're going to ask God for as this year is run in the second half, is that, Lord, I receive a renewed mind. Your life, I said last Sunday, please don't forget, I said the most strategic thing Satan wants to attack in your life is your what? Eh? Your mind and your, your mind and your mouth. If he gets your mind and your mouth, he's done with your life. Because he knows that your mind will inform your mouth. Your mind will supply information to your mouth. And your mouth will direct the course of your life. Satan knows. So if your mind is rich, your life will be rich. As a man thinketh in his heart, in spite of God's intention for him, in spite of the plan God has for him, his, his life will reduce to his thoughts. Even if God wants to do so much in his life, so far as he's constantly thinking towards a particular pattern, his life will take that. God will say, but I have something else. He said, no, this is where you're going. That's the steering wheel of your life. If the sense you're going to ask God this morning, is the Lord help my mind. Well, I'm going to continue second service. Amen. I brought two notes. <laughs> Amen. Your life will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus. Any grip of Satan over your mind, I break it today in the name of Jesus. I declare that you are free in your mind. You didn't say believe in amen. Amen. Your life will take the course of your mind. It says Romans 12 verse 2 again. It says be ye transformed, be ye changed from poor to wealthy, from nothing to something, from weak to strong by the renewal of your mind. In second steps, I'm going to tell you three keys to expanding your mind. How to change your mind. How to transform your mind. I'll tell you in second service. But I'll go more and more and more and think on thoughts. I'm going to teach you this morning. My intention is that when you leave this service this morning, because today is the final day of this meeting, when you leave that door this morning, you'll be a changed person. God will bless you with wisdom. God, David told Solomon, if you read the book of Proverbs chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, Solomon kept saying, my father said this, my father said that, David call him. ATML. Two years. What is this for? Loving God? Or he said, when God appears to you and says, My son, what should I give you? He said, Ask for wisdom. If I hear that you ask for money, I will rise up from the dead and give you a very heavy knock. Because money has been commanded to follow wisdom. Are you following me? Ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Ask for a bright mind. When you enter an office, they see from your work. This is a bright man. Be working with an alaj. Be working with an alaj. You say, please, I want to go pray in tongues. They come up with an issue. Say, give me five minutes. All of them will wait for you. Because they know when he's coming back from that betrothal, is coming back with solutions. When they notice that your level of solution is dropping, they say, have you not been praying in tongues for a while? The I, I did a case in, in, in my group. al the, the CPO, the order of them, Muslims. And I came in on that case. Lord, I see the light. Stood on the case. They brought people from Bank of Industry. Came to meet us. On my foot, the Bible says, take no thought of what you shall say. See, at that moment, I'll be given to you. Because there's light. Your mind is already sharpened. Are you following me this morning? The case was dismissed. On The man had already roped himself. Roped all his family members. 
When I got there, it was, it was shaky. They, it collapsed. They rushed him to, to hospital. And light came. The case was dismissed. Totally dismissed. By light. Law light. Daniel says, God. He said, give us time. Give us time. He says, I would ask the Lord God. Why do you think that Nebuchadnezzar commanded everybody in Babylon to serve God? Why do you think he said that? Is it because Daniel raised the dead? What did Daniel do? He answered difficult questions. Daniel remained in the cabinet for six consecutive enemy kingdoms. APC, PDP, CPC. Parties were changing when returning him. Each party knew you need this guy on your cabinet. Why? Because he has an excellent spirit. He's smarter than their father. That's the kind of mind you need. That's your face. Begin to pray and just say, Lord, this morning, I receive a mind. My mind is renewed. Kikato suklo no kubalikita. Keriata keke bliki baliki talikita sata. My mind, my mind, I receive a renewed mind. I receive a renewed mind. Are you praying? Come on. Pray with intensity. Pray with fire. 